So the last couple pieces that we need to build before we can actually start putting finish on all these parts is we need to build the back panels and the back stretcher panel. I don't really quite, I don't really know how to define the difference between the two because they're both back panels in some form of way. So in this panel here, we've got all the parts we need to make the back panels that are actually gonna mount to the inside of the cases. So we left those rabbited areas mounted to the back area of the actual cases themselves. This pile is for the back panel that's going to stretch between the two and actually give this thing some rigidity and some structure when it's all put together. And those are where we're gonna be using those uh, threaded bolts and adding some threaded holes to the uh, tenons on some of these pieces here. And so we're gonna be building all three of these back panels at the same time because they're very similar in a lot of ways. They're basically all the same components. They're gonna be built in the exact same way using mortise and tenon joinery. And they're using all the same walnut panels to go in between them and fill the gaps. The only minor difference is that the smaller back panels use a two inch wide piece and the back stretcher panel uses one and a half inch wide pieces just because that's what worked out a little bit better when I was designing this and that's what we're just going to stick to here. So I'm just going to get going with this stuff. There's not a whole lot to talk about because it's all stuff that you've already seen me do. I've already explained it time and time again and yeah, there's not really nothing that exciting going on.
Okay, so we've got the whole back panel mounted on here now, and you can see that there's still some gaps in here, but those will go away once they actually get this whole thing glued up and it's a solid structure. Right now, there's a lot of little areas that have movement to it, so we can't actually get it to fit in here perfectly. Once it's a solid structure, I can put it in here and it'll be just fine. Now, I've also got the other, the two smaller back panels, I got them made and they're all ready to go for the glue up. We just have to do the final fitting of the walnut panels. Now, one thing I will mention about the walnut panels that I'm putting in here is the walnut panels are much thicker on these three back panels compared to what's actually on the side of the cases here. Because especially on this section, what I'm most worried about is me accidentally kicking it and breaking out one of the thinner panels that I have on the side here. So the panels that we have all on the side here go into a quarter inch groove that then supports them. They're about three eighths of an inch thick through most of the panel, but they go down, they, they're thinned down to a quarter of an inch on all four sides. Whereas the panels that we're gonna put in the back panel here are just gonna be three eighths of an inch thick all the way around. They're just gonna be a nice solid panel that's fitted in perfectly into the grooves that are in here. And that's going to make them much stronger. So that if I do accidentally kick them, there's a much smaller chance that they'll break easily. And so before we can glue up all three of these panels, all we need to do is just go in and fit the walnut panels that are gonna fit inside of the empty spaces here. And so you might be wondering why there's this little U shape in this back frame here. And that's purely because the monitor arm that I have mounts on, it's one of those like screw clamps, so it's, it's a little C clamp that goes over your desk and you have a little pad that you screw up tight. And I wanna make sure that there's room in there for me to actually be able to tighten that up. And so I was going to try and offset this, but then I decided that my monitor arm is actually, does actually work well when, even when it's centered. So I'm just going to be centering it on the desk here. I'm mounting it to the actual top section. And so we've got enough, plenty enough clearance between the top of this bar and where our desk is going to be sitting to actually be able to tighten up that clamp. And so you have a few different options when you're looking for monitor arms. The ones that I prefer are definitely the ones that, have, that are removable. They don't make a permanent mark. So some of them, you actually have to drill a hole into the desktop and then you mount a clamp underneath. And that, that is a more stronger way of doing it. But the ones that are removable, like the one that I have, is it doesn't damage the desk. So that eventually I don't want to have this desk or I don't want to have my computer at this desk. I just want this as like a writing desk or something. I can just take the monitor off and there's no, you know, there's no obvious damage to the desktop when I take that monitor arm off. And so I'm going to be trying something a little bit new with this panel and the two other smaller back panels. And that's going to be, I'm going to glue them all up with the walnut panels in them. And then once we have them all glued together, we're then gonna pass them to the drum sander a few times to actually get everything nicely flattened out. Because this is something that I really wish I'd done with the side panels over here, because that gets everything to a nice equal depth. But the only thing I'm concerned about here is I'm not quite sure how you finish the inside areas here. So I have all of our back panels out of the clamps now. They all glued up really nicely. They're nice and strong together. They're not gonna come apart anytime soon. So now I'm gonna go through and clean up the little bit of glue screws out on here, and then I'm gonna run them through the drum sander. Then we can go through and add our rabbits to the top and bottom of the inside of these smaller back panels, and we'll be good to go to actually mount them onto the cases. With the panel that goes between the two cases, it'll be this exact same thing. I just have to go through, clean up a little bit of glue squeeze out that are on some of the joints, and then I can again pass it through the drum sander a few times, to get it down to a finished thickness that I want, so that all of our joints are nicely cleaned up. Then, rather than changing out the grit on the drum sander here, I'm just gonna use my random orbit sander over all the surfaces here to just do a final cleanup pass of everything, because it's not going to be super hard to go from 80 grit on, this, on these panels up to about 220 grit is where I usually stop. Mm -hmm. 